And welcome to Hannity. Tonight, the Obama White House appears to be willing to do and say anything to try and change the subject from Obamacare. For example, instead of talking about the president's big lie that you could keep your doctor, keep your insurance plan, well, he'd rather lecture us on immigration and even now negotiate with the terrorist regime in Iran. But let's be honest here. Can you blame him for trying to change the subject? According to the latest poll numbers, only four out of ten Americans actually believe the president can effectively manage the country which is downright embarrassing. And in that very same survey, a majority of Americans, that's 53 percent, said he is not honest or trustworthy. Now, stinging poll numbers are not the only thing sending the administration into a tailspin. Even ultra-liberal lawmakers like Al Franken are beginning to bail on Obama mania. According to reports, quote, U.S. Senator Al Franken says he's open to a brief delay of the individual mandate that is at the heart of the Affordable Care Act if the federal government's health insurance marketplace is not fixed by the administration's self-imposed December 1 deadline. I think then we have to consider extending the deadline for the mandate, but let's hope that doesn't happen happen, said Franken, when asked what happens if most of the problems with the site are not under control by then. And let's not forget, late last week, the Department of HHS, headed by the disgrace, Kathleen Sebelius, announced that next year they push back the deadline for enrolling in Obamacare. By the way, conveniently, that will be after the midterm elections. Are you surprised? Joining me now with reaction in studio, Texas Congressman Louis Gohmert, New Jersey Congressman Leonard Lance. Guys, good to see you, Louis. Good rare, to see you. rare in studio right. appearance. Yeah. Good to Let's be here. start. I'm watching this announcement late Saturday night on this deal with Iran, and I'm thinking, <laughs> why? Why does the administration trust this regime that has been fomenting terror, fighting proxy wars, and even late last week was threatening to wipe Israel off the map again? Well, that's still what they believe. And why do they trust them more? Uh, why did the Clinton administration trust North Korea more than Republicans? I mean, it's the same kind of mentality that think uh, conservatives, patriots are the problem. But if you look, they are following the North Korea game plan. It was North Korea in 1994. Wendy Sherman was the policy coordinator for the Clinton administration. She's now leading the negotiations for the Obama administration. And if you remember, in 1994, they got a promise that in return for us giving them nuclear reactors, giving them all kinds of help with nuclear power, all they had to do was renounce nuclear weapons. And of Guess course, they ended up getting a weapon. Yeah, and yeah. Now, now they're helping Iran. And they extracted money, concessions every time. Yes. It was, it was this game that they played, and they won every time. And Iran's following the exact same thing North Korea. I think North Korea is not just helping them on uh, missiles and on nuclear weapons. They're helping them on how you game the United States. They're too stupid. They'll just, all you got to do is promise them anything, and they will help Here's, you with nuclear weapons. Last nuclear week, weapons. the supreme leader of Iran actually referred to Israel as the rabid dog of the region and said the Zionist regime is doomed to destruction. When you look at the internals of this deal, what do we find? We don't have full access and inspection of every site, only the ones that they designate it's okay. So why would America take that deal and open up billions? They now have time and money to ease the pressure and continue their program. Exactly, Sean. This is terrible, and uh, I think that most Americans will be opposed to it. And not only uh, those who serve on the Republican side in Congress, but uh, Democratic members as well. For example, Chuck Schumer here in New York. and Bob I, Menendez in New Jersey. Uh, Senator Menendez, who chairs the uh, Foreign Relations Committee. Uh, I think that it's terrible, and I think there will be a reaction in Congress against it. Oh. And I think John Bolton has a point, though. This was about stopping Israel from defending itself. If you go back to February of 2012, uh, this administration, Leon Panetta, told the Washington Post they're going to attack April, May, or June. You don't do that to your friends. You don't betray a friend like that. At the end of March, when they were afraid they were going to attack anyway, then they released that they're going to use Azerbaijan. So Azerbaijan had to say, no, no, we won't allow this. We have stabbed them in the back repeatedly again, again this fall. And now this is the latest so Israel's thing. alone. It's they well, they're negotiating with France and Saudi Arabia. They sent a, a negotiator. Well, the to Saudis Russia. were shocked by this. They, yeah. they, they took them by surprise. Now, does this start a nuclear arms race in the Middle well, East? Well, I can tell you, being in the Middle East, uh, Middle East back in uh, September, we heard from some people, allies, who were saying, we keep watching you throw your allies under the bus, and we're wondering which one of us will be next. All right, let, me, let me give you three instances. One is 
Under President Obama, we gave the head of the Muslim Brotherhood, former head that became President Morsi, who referred to the Israelis as descendants of apes and pigs, we gave him F-16s, tanks, and billions of dollars. Now we have the supreme leader calling Israel their, the doom, their doom for destruction, the rabid dog of the region. And then we had President Obama surprise them, saying they ought to go back to 67 borders. If you're Bibi Netanyahu and you're Israel today, what are you thinking? I think he's thinking that we are not as good an ally as we should be. Not at all. And that is why Mr. Cohen, his national security advisor, is coming to the United States. And I certainly hope that the administration will consider fully the views of the Israeli right. government. So he can be treated the way Netanyahu was treated at the White House? <laughs> I hope that he'll be treated better. And certainly we in Congress want him to be treated better. And we in Congress, on a bipartisan capacity, support our friend Israel. All right, here's the next question. Is this between what happened last week in the Senate, changing the rules that have been in place all those years, and this, is this a distraction because they want to talk about anything other than the failure of Obamacare? Well, I think they got a twofer here. First of all, you get to betray a friend you don't like, which is Israel. They repeatedly make that clear, even though their words say, oh, yes, we're friends. Their actions make very clear they're not. And then uh, also, it is a distraction from the disaster that is and will be Obamacare. So, yeah, he gets a twofer here. All right, but it never ends because every week, every month, every year, cancellations, rate shock, and, of course, you don't get to keep your plans. So I, I, they can't I, distract from I, this. I, I, I think it might go beyond being a distraction. I just think it's fundamentally bad policy. Obamacare, fundamentally bad policy this new decision regarding Iran, fundamentally bad policy, and the change of the filibuster rule, fundamentally bad policy. And that, of course, will inure to our benefit when we gain control of the United States right. Senate in, in a year. Wow. All right. Scary times. Guys, good to see you. Welcome, Thank you, welcome in studio. We always love oh, having you. Love being here. Thank, Thank you. you.